So I'm actually the board president, by the way, for Hub City. So we are a startup. So Hub City in Spartanburg, South Carolina. So uh, we've got a very good architect who's done this nice rendering for us. But this is what our building looks like today. So. Yep. And that's what we want it to look like by the end of the year. So we're, we're on, a, on, the, on the right track, we feel like, and uh, going to be starting construction soon. So what is Spartanburg? So we're a textile town, or most of the last century we were a textile town. And the textiles are the reason I'm in Spartanburg. I work for a textile company. So um, just a very strong manufacturing base, and that's uh, helped the area survive today. So textiles, a lot of that has went overseas, but uh, we've got the BMW manufacturing plant in our area, so a lot of manufacturing has stayed, and the economy has been fairly good um, for us. So what is Spartanburg today? We're a college town. There's seven institutions of higher learning in our city. Uh, we're a bike town, so a lot of work the last 10 years for put in bike lanes, be, have active living. And uh, recently, uh, we're selected one of five small towns by a nonprofit that is doing this Way to Wellville project. So it's a five-year project, five metrics, obesity, and things like that that they're going to work very hard to improve in our community. So a lot of activity going in the direction that you would want it to if you're opening a co-op. And we're going to be home to the first co-op in South Carolina. So what is Hub City? So uh, if you don't know, um, since the early 1900s, there's seven rail lines that come together in Spartanburg. And if you draw it out on a map, it looks like the, the spokes on a wheel, and Spartanburg is at the hub. So that's uh, several businesses in our city are, use the Hub City name, but uh, that's what we've selected. We feel like it's uh, appropriate for us and, and has um, some good marketing behind it. Uh, one thing in particular, you know, so why a co-op in Spartanburg? So there's a lot of reasons. I'm sure we can all come up with many of them. But these are ones that I thought resonated with our particular ownership. And uh, two is center of community, so hub. So we think we can leverage that hub name quite a bit and talk about um, how we're going to be the center of our community downtown. So we're a startup. And this is our ownership growth chart, so by year. So I'm an engineer. This is the only chart in the, in the deck. So. But, uh, you know, started out with a lot of momentum. Yay, we're getting a co-op. And then it's like, when is it opening? <laughs> and then we have a site, and we have an architect, and uh, 375 people sign up in one year. And then, why isn't it open? <laughs> and then this year, expecting opening day. So that's a projected number in 2015. But we're <laughs> We're trying to get to 1,750 owners from about 1,250 right now. We've had 50 so far this year, and, and we really feel like, uh, you know, just putting a backhoe out on the site is going to going to leverage that quite a bit. So, yeah. So how do we make our vision a re reality in Hub City? Uh, so Debbie Suasna did our market study, and again, I'm an engineer, so I'm not going to go through all these numbers, but I wanted to point out that it's kind of a mixed bag. We've got several things that are in our favor, look good, several things that are negative, and uh, you know, a couple of neutral. How do we go leverage what's available to us? So wh where are we good, and, and how can we maximize that? So as I said, um, Spartanburg is a college town. So there are actually five of the seven colleges have a campus within one mile of our site. So several thousand students, faculty, and then also directly across from our site, uh, the last several years, a lot of the um, uh, arts organizations in Spartanburg come together under one entity, so the Chapman Cultural Center. So there's actually a Spartanburg Little Theater, Spartanburg Philharmonic, Spartanburg Ballet. All that is directly across the street from us. So we, we're very excited about, we've got a lot of very positive things, even though some of the demographics aren't exactly where you would want them to be. And our competitive environment is weak. Um, so Debbie says our trade area is up to 17 miles. So going down 85, so you know, we're between Charlotte and Atlanta. But going down uh, 85, the next town is Greenville. So Greenville has a Whole Foods. They have an Earth Fair. They have a Trader Joe's. Um, Spartanburg has Fresh Market. And that's it, really. So uh, you know we've got Publix and Ingles and all those things that are moving into organic. But in terms of the 
the competitors that, that Dave talked about this morning, the direct ones, we're, we're about 25 miles away. And uh, so that's, that's also good for us. So how do you accelerate growth, right? That's what we're here to talk about this afternoon. So the first thing, what we want to do is build our base. So also, as Dave talked about, I'm calling it the committed core. So the easiest customer that you're ever going to get is the one that's already thinking about buying from you. You, you don't have to do a lot of selling there. So uh, I laughed a little bit to myself when they asked me to talk because I'm like, well, we're not open. What, I don't know anything about how to sell groceries. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so what, what do I have to, uh, to offer? But I actually sell textiles and I sell commodity textiles. So it's, it's, uh, it's not a lot different. Tight margins and you know, it's how you control your costs and how much volume can you drive to your, to your product. So, so this might be 13% of your shoppers, but it's gonna be 25% of your money. So you've gotta definitely uh, reach out and be connected to that group. And then also for us, I'm calling it the directed demographic. So the people that should be in your core. So you're, uh, for us, our core is owner number 100 that put down $150 when we just had an idea and we're not even open. But you've got also, you might have a college professor that's across the street from you that will be your core, but you gotta make sure you're reaching out to them and getting them information, getting them into the store. So I look at this as the fertile soil. So you gotta have this to be able to grow and within that, um, then we start talking about the mid-level shopper. So how do you get those people into your show, store? All right. So we got to differentiate. We got to talk about how we're different, what makes a co-op different, how spending money at a co-op amplifies locally the products we carry, the wages, the benefits, things like that. So how do we convince uh, the consumers that we're different? How do we do that through education? So we got to be out in the community. We got to be talking uh, with community, telling them why we're different, and then fostering outreach. So also for us, we are right beside the bus station, the local bus hub for the town. So we have a tremendous opportunity to reach out to different demographics that aren't going to be into our core. So if we can educate there as well, foster outreach, then that's going to allow us to accelerate our growth. That's it.